Hello everyone, welcome to your weekly mystic. This is for the week of January 20th through January 26th for 2020. This is our weekly forecast of energy on a daily set. This is not a typical uh, tarot reading regarding horoscopes. This is more about each day of the week, Monday through Sunday. And if you'd like to check out all my playlists and the different kind of readings I do, which I do do horoscopes, uh, I do do horoscopes. Uh, I have playlists here. If you click this I here at the bottom here, if you're uh, looking on a phone, turn your device sideways and you'll see the I icon. And if you'll click that, you'll go to my homepage and you can check out the playlist and all the other videos I've uploaded, including some reboots of some meditations. And you'll be able to enjoy those or use them to help you uh, center your energy and clear your chakras. So and with that all being said, there'll be a meditation at the end of this reading. If you'd like to stay tuned, there'll also be an explanation of the two decks that are here. Uh, the the uh, Sacred Geometry deck and the Crystal Oracle deck, the Crystal Healing Oracle. And we'll, uh, I'll give an explanation of what those cards are with using the books that came with them to help explain. And uh, don't forget, you can also join and be a Mystic member. The meditations that you'll see on the on the reboot meditations are from the Daily Mystic Members Only channel, and they're just some of the select few that I feel like are really strong, and I uh, felt like they were worth reloading for people who aren't my members. But uh, you get a new one every day if you're a member. So that being said, we'll move forward. Oh, last but not least, let's don't forget I actually do. Uh, readings, personal readings, you can go to royalmystic.com and you'll be able to find how to book a reading there and click to, to do so. You can also click from this, po this portal here on where the icon is. Uh, it'll take you straight to booking a reading if you'd like to do that as well. So here we go. Thank you angels, archangels, divine pure white light, divine spirit, spirit guides, gods and goddesses. Thank you so much for being present here to allow everyone to have the information they seek Ooh, for the week of January 20th through January 26th of 2020. We thank you so much divine for these blessings and beautiful messages and we receive them in the love and light for which they are intended. We thank you for your divine guidance as always and we welcome your energy here. Thank you so much divine. Okay, so we got our first two cards. You know what the second one is, but I'm going to turn it over. This is the top card because that's the way it fell. And I'm going to just lay it here. So that's Monday. You know what Tuesday's is. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. And a combination of Saturday, sun Saturday Sunday for the weekend energy. And our underlier is the nine of wands so the nine of wands is where we've been working really hard to get at a place of finishing something off and we're at the point of the most resistance which is right before the miracle happens right before the breakthrough is when you get to have the real pushback from the universe or from whatever you're you're moving forward to don't be afraid of that know that you're if, it, if it's getting difficult and you're doing all the right things that means it's about to break you're about to have a breakthrough moment. So don't give up five minutes before you reach your goal. Okay? It's, this is just an inherent fact. It always gets tougher. And, then, and there's a saying that it always gets darkest before the dawn. So allow yourself to take a breath. Take a knee if necessary. Catch your breath. Reorganize your mind. Reorganize your will. That's what these readings are for. To help you with your fortitude. Facing the troubles. Facing the, the energy and holding yourself accountable in the strength of bringing yourself through whatever it is you need. Now, I'm not praying on these other decks because I prayed out loud for all of them. So, this is how I do it because we would be here forever. And uh, the decks don't need that. They had the energy as I prayed over them. So, trust me and believe they work very well in unison. Yes, you do. It's kind of amazing sometimes. Oh, goodness. Sometimes it's just earth-shatteringly amazing because it just flabbergasts me when they really start to sing the same tune. Oh, look at that. This is definitely the breakthrough moment. You've got the Nine of Wands 
with the Ten of Cups. Hang on, I'm juggling everything. Give me the card. There it is. So that's the underlying energy. It's kind of the hub of the wheel, okay? So it's the center core energy. This is amazing. The Ten of Cups is a, a finished product in the best possible way. There's the beautiful castle out front. And it, this card's little tagline, uh, when you're learning tarot, is the happily ever after card because it is the magical ending. So it means a very good outcome from all of this hard work you're doing. Now let's see what our Law of Attraction cards have to say. Intuition. My intuition guides me to people, places, and jobs that I enjoy. So listen, intuition is no small thing. It does feel small in the onset when you're not uh, accustomed to trusting it or when people have made you doubt your own intuition, that's another tool people use uh, or, or the forces that be use uh, to work your, work your it, um, success out of you or make you feel less than, pulling your own empowerment away from you. Listen, your intuition is the strongest thing you have and you were born with it. So please don't think of it being a small energy. Take hold, inevitable change. So this is the Phoenix energy, which is the name of the the Phoenix Gateway is the 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 card holder, the person who made the cards. This is her company name. And there's the Merkaba in the middle with a circle and the cube. Okay. And so there's so many figurative things happening in this particular image. It's amazing. Then you've got all the sacred geometry symbols here. They're the elemental energies. So this is almost like the tower card rising from the ashes. So we like that. That's a good card. And we'll read more about it after the meditation in our educational portion of this reading. So here we have our beautiful crystal oracle cards. Let's see what energy we have with that. Fairy stone. Oh, love me some fairy stone. Very, very, very positive energy. It also is a good card if you're trying to conceive a child. Uh, this is fertility, and it is found on the banks of a sacred river in Canada. So um, if you have the, the any, any good shop that carries crystals and stones, any good place uh, will have these kind of stones for you to uh, purchase and they're not expensive and they're beautiful and wonderful energy so that is a great and it also means success because fertility is in itself the abundance and success okay so it doesn't have to be trying to conceive a child you could be trying to conceive your dreams right making them take a foothold so here we go this is monday's energy my cards move a lot um, they do it by themselves all the time. Uh, it's the energy that's in this particular area. I have a very highly charged uh, table here uh, with all positive energy. It's infused. Uh, it, I even have stones under the table. So I have a sliding tray that's under the table that, that holds my keyboard. Well, on the keyboard, I also have very charged stones. So it does make it for a very, uh, very energetic reading. Here we go. Three of Cups. Beautiful celebration energy. It also means learning to receive from the universe because these angels are dancing and tipping the cup intentionally to fill it beyond fullness. Remember, in certain uh, religions, it says packed full to overflow, the overflow of abundance. Remember, we have to learn how to receive our abundance. And that cup is definitely being offered because these two uh, that are tipping, they're being done intentionally to pour into you or into your, you know, your ability to succeed or receive. More receiving, we have the Eight of Wands. So Monday's energy has the Three of Cups and the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands is blooming. So these are new prospects and new opportunities. Very fertile. We've got fertility here, so we're really talking about that happening beautiful something returning to you in the in a prosperous way and it's fast moving because it's flying in the air 
Now, sometimes when we get a whole lot of things happening all at once, we get caught up in the over-analysis of them. This Eight of Swords is the over-analysis paralysis card. And you have to be in a place of being able to distinguish that you're the one who's overthinking it and the reason you're having the, the gridlock of what to do next. Sometimes we have to sit down and make a list, clear our minds. Um, it's really true about moving forward. You have to give yourself a place to start. So a list is the easiest to remember all the things that are going on in your head. This card does this one. Boy, it never wants to stay. Doesn't matter which cards it is. This one is the one that's always moving around. <laughs> I got to see what's under there. I might have to move that stone. <laughs> it's just making it go crazy. So this is a uh, very strong energy of needing to get in the right frame of mind. So you have to make a list and, and analyze what you're looking at. Bring all of your energy away from focusing and, and look at all the different things that you're analyzing in your mind. Sit down and just literally vomit out a list of what's what your mind is thinking right now. Like sit down and meditate, get it clear, look at what the task you have to do. The things that don't belong to you, that belong to someone else, you need to cross those off because it's not an action item for you. That'll clog up your system here, right? So you need to clear all those out before you end up moving forward so that you can move forward on what you actually have as a task and not be worrying over other people's stuff. Because truly, if it's not your action item, it's not worth your energy. They have to make the choice, not you. It looks like you're able to do that. You come to a balance. The Justice card is the Libra Major Arcana, and that's all about justice and balance. There's the scales and the knowledge in the sword. And the sword is also a clarifier. So the, he, he has definitely taken the sword that he needs to take and move forward here. So it allows you to be in a place of clear and concise judgment and, and balanced energy. So you will get through that on Tuesday. Now Wednesday's energy, well, that's about the right decision being made for sure because this is the enlightenment that you're being lifted up by the universe into a higher position. This is the world card. This is being able to enter into a new realm in the divine light and being empowered with it. So this can mean a promotion or a job that is higher, a higher position than you were. It can also mean a spiritual awakening. We have the Empress, which is along with that empowerment. This is very strong energy of the Divine Feminine. It is the feminine energy of the universe, which means creative energy, nurturing energy, and being in a place of conception, which is what you're trying to do here. Obviously, we have this, these uh, beautiful energies on these other cards that are singing along with this in tune. So, and intuition as well. Now, we have the Hermit for Thursday. Thursday's Hermit is really looking for your footing. Kind of doing a soul searching, if you will, and allowing the divine light to show you the way. This is where we have to face the truth of what we find. When we go in within ourselves and look at what's been blocking us or why we're having certain feelings or why we didn't get whatever it is, we have to figure out how was our approach? What was our intention? What did we do differently than we should have done? And take a real hard look at your development as a spiritual person. And if your intention was to um, do any kind of negative thing, you've got to change that. So we have to be in a place, first of all, of receiving this beautiful Three of Cups and Eight of Wands. And not try to think that everybody's out to get you. Okay? So if, you're, if you really look at hard at your soul and you see these are going to help you avoid the pitfalls... We have to go in and fix whatever it was that didn't allow us to move forward. And when we do that, we receive the energy moving to us. This is someone beckoning for your action, either taking a job or, or moving forward in whatever this energy is for you. Some people are in their retirement time. Some people are in their getting their first job. Some people are in the promotion. Uh, you're being called to action, whichever it is. That rod energy means action. And the Hermit is the, the Virgo Major Arcana. So it's very much about, you've got this Libra, you've got the, the Virgo. So very much about the inner and outer balance. Then we have the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups on Friday is you looking forward, knowing that there's going to be a little peril and, and unknown and uncertainty of the future. 
being a little bit worried about it, but not in a place of dramatic worry, okay? Feeling good and being able to step forward in spite of the little thundercloud she sees and she knows it's going to come to pass. And something to be revealed here, this is the Pisces Major Arcana, which is the, the revealing of whatever it is you've been going for here. So this is that the moon actually... This is the fertility has taken hold on this particular moon card because it is sort of the embryo, the, the, the brain child or the energy child that you've been going for. So this is bringing that to light on Friday. So that's not a bad thing. Now let's see what the weekend's energy is. And we have the justice card a second time. So beautiful energy of making the right choice. Being in the light, having put all of your energy into the divine light and bringing a, being able to very, very pinpointedly focus on the right decision. And some of you are actually leaving something behind. So this can be leaving behind a job because you're actually moving jobs or you're letting go of something that no longer serves you, such as a, a toxic relationship or old negative experiences from the past that, that just you can't keep reflecting on if you want to move forward. So that's a beautiful week's energy here um, for all of you who want to do the meditation. If you have a fairy stone, grab your fairy stone. If you do not, you can use the image of the ones I'm holding here. And the only thing you have to do is remember not to hold your breath because what I'm doing is I'm channeling. And I'm channeling the beautiful energy from divine to allow us to clear our chakras so that we can come out of this as a refreshed and restored so that we can get through this week. And we're going to, uh, the only thing you have to do is breathe in with me when I, when I cue you to breathe in and inhale. We're breathing in divine light through our crown. I'll tell you to hold it wherever I put it in the body. Now when I say hold it, I mean hold the energy, not your breath. So breathe shallowly until I tell you to exhale. Here we go. Breathing in beautiful white divine light now from your crown chakra. Inhale. Hold the energy in your heart. Allow the beautiful receptive energy of the fertile new beginning, whether it be in finances or in thought or in conception of ideas, allowing yourself to receive whatever the universe is trying to give to you. Maybe it's an, an energy of reproducing if it is we as, we open and allow that energy as well for those of you who are in that place whatever wants to be born through you whether it be a creative idea or an actual baby we, we receive that energy and allow that energy to move through our bodies in the receptive way that it needs to for those of us who have that energy allowing your heart to open and be open to the universe Letting all shadow energy be cast aside, all worry, all fear, all doubt. Everything that you need to move forward is given to you right now with the universe's divine light moving through your heart and lightening all the cells within your body and making them 100% of divine light. As we exhale, we exhale all darkness, all sickness, all illness, all fear, all doubt, all shame, and all anxiety and, and negative energy. Exhale now. Second breath, we're going to hold this in our crown as we breathe in through our crown, inhaling beautiful white divine light to your crown chakra. Holding the energy in your crown chakra, allowing the beautiful clearing and cleansing of your crown connection to the divine source, allowing all energy transmission to be done in completion and absolute understanding, allowing all shadow energy all stagnant energy to be removed. Anything blocking your crown chakra from the divine light is now moved and released from your energy field within your body. All transmission is 100% accurate and clear in perfection. And you are now able to communicate with and receive from the universe's divine communication. Moving now into your third eye, allowing your third eye to open giving it permission to show you whatever the universe is trying to show you visually, audibly, emotionally, sentiently, allowing you to have all communication 
and being able to receive it in a language that you understand very clearly, either in a knowing or an actual spoken language. Moving now into your throat chakra, allowing your voice to be clear and cleansed of all negativity, allowing yourself to speak from your heart with truth and purpose and love, compassion and joy, and understanding and encouragement. Moving now into your heart chakra a second time, we receive the beautiful divine light in our heart chakra, allowing the beautiful energy of open communication, heartfelt love and kindness to all, allowing your heart to illuminate with the golden light of love and the wonderful light of divine as we move it through our cells in our body, with every beat of our heart, it is pushed into every cell of your body as you begin to illuminate from within. As your illumination brightens further and further, even your skin is illuminated and you are now a being of beautiful white light, pure, wonderful energy, being restorative, removing anything that is not in alignment with that vibration. We let it fall away from our bodies now. Moving now into your solar plexus chakra, bringing the energy in to recharge and restore the battery of the center of, your, of all of your, so, your chakras within your body, allowing your solar plexus to be just a beacon of power and enlightenment, allowing yourself to be empowered and strengthened through this energy, letting go of ego, being very humble and authentic, Letting go of judgment of yourself and others. Letting go of fear, doubt, and shame. We bring that light to full beam like a lighthouse. Going in all directions like a star. As like the sun. Burning away anything that may be in inhibiting you from expressing yourself in the kindest, most loving way. Moving now into your sacral chakra, allowing the creative energy of the universe to take form through you, through your thoughts, through your words, through your actions, through your art, through your music, through the food you prepare. Allow it to be shown as the beautiful energy that you use to have yourself in the connection of divine and express divine through your physical presence. All is valid. Moving now into your root chakra, allowing yourself to ground yourself, center yourself, and balance yourself. All chakras are now in divine harmony and alignment. As we exhale, we send all things that are removed from the body out back into the universe to be recycled and renewed, and we receive divine light, healing, love, and abundance in its place. Exhaling now. Last breath, breathing in beautiful white divine light and sending it like a beacon through your body down into the Mother Gaia, through the soles of your feet, to allow all to be cleansed and cleared. Inhaling now, sending the light straight through your chakra prana tube into the center of the core of the earth as we allow the, the wonderful Mother Gaia energy to cleanse and clear and purify this energy that we receive it back through our bodies and send it right through the top of our heads out like a fountain, the most beautiful fountain of light to restore all others around us. Anyone in need of love and light will receive this wonderful gift from our own soul to theirs. Exhaling now. Many blessings to you all. Thank you for being part of this beautiful meditation. And we will now go to the educational portion of the reading. <laughs> and break out the books. So we have this. Each one of these cards has a number on top. Number nine. Number nine is the beautiful phoenix. And we will read most of what it has here. It gets long sometimes, so I just do the concise part. I am able to build firm foundations in my life while remaining balanced and harmonized in my everyday life. Even though there's inevitable change, we must take hold and be able to, to move as things change. It's like, that is the one certain thing of life. It, it, it will change. It says, take hold. 
Take Hold is here to take you on the ride of a lifetime. It offers you an opportunity to reach out and help you anchor your dreams, desires, and aspirations while keeping you grounded and secured firmly in this wonderful, precious world. Our potential to live in the fullest is when you realize what it is that you want to bring to fruition. Find your creative spark within and pull it into, with love, pull, pull all of your love into it. Put all of your love into it. Become aware of any blockages and dissolve them with love and intention. It is time to let go of what may be holding you back and choose the path of change. Change isn't always easy, but when, crea when created, it is powerful and rewarding. So I, I'm just pausing because right here, it's talking about it right here. The, the the hermit card, this is about that moment of allowing yourself to follow into the parts that may not be so savory, but they must be faced with truth. So when you find the things within yourself that's blocking you, you have to be able to let them go so that you can move forward. Okay? So the phoenix is a mystical bird, a fire spirit with a colorful plumage and tail of gold and scarlet. It has the ability to consciously consume itself in flames when it knows death is imminent and then rise again from the very same ashes. As the phoenix rises from the ashes, it takes hold of the essence of its whole being, bringing through with it the remnants of its past. So the phoenix is a representation of our being and the path that we follow once we choose to walk the earth plane but the method we use to get here when we're supposed to be going, uh, where we're supposed to be going is a matter of choice. We can choose to walk the path of light, understanding, and growth, or go down the path of dreary and dark uh, that, will, that only contains addiction and destruction. So the Phoenix is a very strong energy to allow us to get a hold of our light. Um, it, it, and this is another one more time singing the song of life is your choice. How, how you want to live it is there is free will. A lot of people choose to think there is not, but I'm here to sing the song we are. It is true. We have free will because I have changed my life and I know so many others who have as well. So this is, this is why I do what I do here so that everyone has the opportunity to glean the knowledge that just because you're in a bad place doesn't mean you have to stay there. This is why you must understand I speak about light and wonderfulness and bringing good things in because if you never concentrate on that, then you stay in the dark side. We have to think of light to see light. You have to be ready and prepared for it. So here's our beautiful fertility fairy stone. Here we go. Fairy stone is found only on the banks of the sacred rivers, rivers, rivers in northern Quebec and Canada. This unique and very rare stone is a true gift from the land and, recog and is recognized as being extremely sacred by local Native American people as they understand its powerful medicine. As you connect deeply with this sacred stone, you will receive all the blessings of good health, prosperity, and fertility. This, this, these amazing stones all have their own unique energy and shapes that at times can look like people. So just because they mentioned this, I picked mine because it has a heart. Now there's a top and there's stuff going on on the back side too. There's a couple of circles. There's another one right here. You can see I've handled it so much it's darkened it. But this one looks like a mother holding a baby. And seriously, each one of them did have a different shape. I identify with hearts. And so that's why that one was for me. You see, I have a lot of heart-shaped stones here all over my table. I just can't find them all, but they're everywhere. So, the sacred stone of magic and good luck. It enhances fertility, assists in healing trauma created in the womb. It offers protection, and it brings good health and prosperity. So... This is a very, very beautiful reading. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being part of it all the way to the end here. Many blessings to you. I hope you have a fabulous week. Love, light, and abundance. Namaste. I'll see you next week.